thank you for joining us. This is a BoobTube Buddies podcast being brought to you by the BoobTube Bettys. I am Bethany. This is Kristen. Hello. And we are reviewing American Horror Story Season 6. And tonight we are reviewing Episode 2 or Chapter 2. Uh, but before we begin, uh, housekeeping. Housekeeping. First, if you could follow the BoobTube Buddies on Facebook, Reddit, Instagram, um, and if you could go to iTunes, that actually that's more important. If you could please go to iTunes and give us a review, it would mean so much. It is uh, the best way to support the podcast and give us feedback and let us know what we can improve or how awesome we're doing. We would love it because we're all narcissists. Or yeah, just a general pick me up throughout the day. You look at your iTunes account, new review, like yeah, because we hate ourselves learn. without it. So yeah, please, exactly. so make us feel good. <laughs> Uh, the best way to get any questions answered, though, is if you if you have any questions or comments, email us at boobtubebuddies at gmail.com, and we'll get back to you ASAP. Um, I can pretty much guarantee my life on it. All right. My piece of housekeeping was last week uh, we were talking about the farmhouse that was built in 1792 and whether or not that correlated with the um, lost colony of Roanoke. And actually, the colony disappeared in 1590. Um, mm. So it was definitely way before. It was uh, three years after that guy, Governor John White, left his posse. And um, So when did Columbus sail the ocean blue? <clears throat> I'm really sorry. 1492. I'm so stupid. <laughs> and if I'm not right, ooh. Um, but, so yeah, but here's the important part. Because by the time he returned in 1590, all of the houses had been dismantled. So, no, this particular house really doesn't, it might have something to do in the long run with it, but time-wise, it doesn't line up just yet. Okay, so we don't necessarily know if 1792 means anything. Yes, and then the last thing I wanted to say for housekeeping is Alexander Zalbin of TV Guide actually did a piece just on the recap of American Horror Story Chapter 2, and um, he kept referring to him as faux Will and or faux Matt, and, <laughs> hold on, wait, 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 wait for it, faux Matt and faux, Sh- faux Shelby, and at least three times throughout, he mistakenly put faux Will. That is so, so weird. I don't, it, it, that is bizarre. It's almost like it's, um, what's that called? Um, brainwaves. It. Yes, brainwaves, that's what I was looking for. No, that is um, super hidden bizarre. Hidden messages. Yes, I know what you mean. Yes, I we are. Can't. By the way, we are the queens of not being able to come up the, with the words that we want. Exactly, but that is, is so exactly what housekeeping is for, is it not? <laughs> housekeeping. Housekeeping. Um, okay, was there anything else you wanted to add to that? Um, no. Okay. I was just going to say, so you do you, girlfriend, because apparently everybody else is doing it. <laughs> uh, so, boobtubebuddies at gmail.com. We got our first email, mm-hmm. and it was very exciting. It was like opening a present on Christmas Day. Um. And the email was from Winston, who also has a podcast. It's called Seriously Casual, and it's seriously without any of the vowels. So S R S L Y Casual. Um, it's really funny. Uh, the other group two buddies really love it too. Um, and it's a comedy podcast with a group of friends that meet meet sometimes over breakfast and just kind of chat about what's going on in their lives, anything really. Which you and I can relate to. Yes, Because it's exactly what we do. But they're super funny. Um, it is what life is all about. And they, they have been so great with showing us love. So thank you so much, Winston, for Hashtag reaching Hashtag winning. Thank you so much. And he had some awesome questions for us. So that's where we're going to start out here with his questions. So question one, Winston's question. Do you think either of the couples are in, quotation marks, on what's going on? Or maybe the sister. Do you want to... I mean, she seems like the most likely if that were the case. I just... I don't, You mean Lee would be the most likely? Most likely, but I mean, I don't know. I, it's a very cool thought. I just haven't come up with that yet. Yeah, Winston, we're stupid. <laughs> Pretty much is, is the summation of it. It, it's, it is a good thing to throw into the, the mixing pot, though, of, of things that could possibly be... I also had not thought of that as being a possibility. Um, yeah. I, That's what, like, when I read it, I was like, oh, I never thought of that. That's, that yeah, would be cool. I, if there is something going on, it would definitely be a twist. I feel like if they, 
that they aren't necessarily consciously aware of it, you know, of being Mm -hmm. some part of it. Um, Okay, so Winston, we don't know. Good answer. Um, (laughs) Second question, do you think this is a haunting or just some crazy people's? I said maybe a little of both due to the appearances of, like, devil worship and sacrifices Mm -hmm. and maybe the, uh, you know, trailing of that. (laughs) So you don't think it's necessarily just the hillbillies playing I think it might be both. crazy, huge, elaborate scheme. I think as a result of what they do in the woods, um, might be, there might be some also supernatural elements to it. See, I think it's completely a haunting. I don't think that the... It might be. You're Um, right. I mean, that would be really cool. I mean, I I get what, I get what you're saying. I, my soul... That's just me not picking an answer. You realize that, right? (laughs) <laughs> well, I'm that's just, just me getting away with both <laughs> answers Classic well that's Gemini. what women are the best at there's no black or white with women it's all gray i i think it's both and you're right winston <laughs> you're right right that's perfect answer. i think you're right we bat our eyes um <laughs> i think it's a haunting and i'm standing firm with that oh i like it okay hold question you, hold you hold you to it <laughs> i i will stay i will stand by it and okay. if i'm wrong i'm wrong i like it any idea what will happen to the couple They are interviewed in different shots, and sometimes in these quotation marks, based on true story type shows, the couple is together during the interview, which is a really good point, and I had not noticed that. This actually alludes to a huge theory out there right now. Um, Broccoli Rob and Rando Guy, um, they're actually the actors, and the story we are seeing is the real Matt and Shelby. And essentially, that would open the doors for them to survive. That is, uh, that's so meta. Very meta. Wow. So, and here's further proof as to why it's become such a popular theory is, in a Reddit AMA, Sarah Paulson was asked to describe her character in one word. She responded, can I do it in three? And then she looked at the camera and said, no, fuck you, one word. (laughs) Oh my god, that would have made it. Um, she looked at the camera and said, real, live, human. What the fuck does that mean? Okay, so she might be the actual Shelby, if you really want to look into it, which people do on the internet. Okay, so they're... Okay, okay, I get it. I real, think I get it. I'm the real, live human. So we're seeing them, but it's not like film, and then the people that... Uh, Broccoli Rob and Rando are the the film version of it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I thought I had something actually good to add to this. Well, but it's I like don't. It, it, well, it's like um, you know, they are they are essentially the dramatic reenactment. Yes, I get it. Okay. Yeah. No, that's cool. This is my answer. Well, Shelby was wearing a necklace that had an. Um, an M on it. So I think they're still together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. But I was like, I can't wait to share this little tidbit. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay, and four. Uh, Winston thought that a great name for this season would be American Horror Story, colon, Nightmare. Well, I hate to tell you, Winston, but that's already been made. It's called Glee Season 6. <laughs> yep, that one was for you, Winston. Hashtag winning. You know, winning for Winston. Yeah. You get it? Oh, Winston, we've given you a hashtag. Yes, we have. Well, thank you again so much, um, Winston, and thank you, Seriously Casual Podcast, for your support. Yes, absolutely. Um, and to anyone else listening, keep the questions coming. We will talk about them. Um And it's super fun. So let's get into the show. Chapter two, Roanoke, which, you know. Which was interesting. Again. Yes. They keep calling it different things. Yeah. Well, and even throughout this one, they only said it once or maybe twice. Once at the beginning, once at the end. I'm not sure. I think it was, I don't know. And then throughout it was my Roanoke nightmare. Well, right. The voice goes, um, American Horror Story, Roanoke. And then later it goes, American Horror Story, my Roanoke nightmare. Well, are there different things that has happened in Roanoke? I don't, I don't know, but they're really not giving Stay you a Stay tuned. I, I do have to say, though, I'm a little bummed that are we just not going to get that 
that intro that uh you know what i mean that yeah i know the thing that, that with every season. fan absolutely loves every single year yeah. which is the crazy effed up opening they always promise us with amazing music but yes. it's still to the same like tune i'm a lot yeah i'm a little bummed me too but I'm really liking the season, so that's okay. But we'll maybe, just, we'll here's the thing, they breath. kept us guessing so much that it might still be to come. It's true. Okay, so, um, it starts out the same way as the first episode with cuts of um, the people being interviewed, uh, Broccoli Rob and Rando are being interviewed, and of the actors, Yes. the actors, quotation marks, experiencing the scary events, and they give you the whole um, dramatic reenactment, they give you that... Flash forward of what's to call. happen in the episode without actually revealing anything. Yeah, so they, they show the, you flashes of the scenes throughout the, the upcoming episode. Right, which but is, they never reveal it. Which is exactly what they do in the first episode. So yeah. um, it's keeping in line with the style of chapter one. And they immediately take you right back to where you were at the end of episode one. You're back in the woods. Mm-hmm. Um, and Shelby is running that scalped guy is screaming poor guy's been screaming for a week now with the scalp hanging <laughs> i bet it's i bet his throat hurts like mine does <laughs> we went to vegas all and vegas. i lost my voice <laughs> so vegas in itself is is its own american horror story episode <laughs> so we went to vegas this is how my voice sounds <laughs> oh, we're gonna rally though yes okay so guy scalped is yes. screaming uh old lady which you recognized immediately as Kathy Bates, and yes. I'm an idiot, and I didn't. Is performing in some <laughs> is performing, I think, a ritual, and I like I wrote down here we go with the bad accents, which you had said last episode. And well, what's even funnier is when you think about it, her our last accent was an American accent, and this is supposed to be an American accent too, just like a different version of an American accent. What what, what is it supposed to be? Like a Boston accent? Because she's in North Carolina. I don't understand what I it's don't supposed know. to be. <laughs> We'll see, I guess. Um, that's what I was going to say, though. The chant, um, I wanted to talk about that. She the what? That the chant that she's doing. Oh, okay. Um, she says, I am the queen of every hive. I am the fire on every hill. I am the shield over every head. I am the spear of battle. Who but am I both the tree and the lightning that strikes it? So, I had a blow your balls off warm fish salad moment earlier today. Hashtag Impractical <laughs> Jokers. We love you. Yes. Um, so apparently this whole chant quote that she did is from, um, the first introduction to the song of a Marijan or Marin. Kate. Oh my God. That was the song I walked down the aisle to. Oh my God. <laughs> What's so funny is the book's called The White Goddess. That's me. It's about Bethany. Um, but guess who it's by? Robert. Kathy Bates. <laughs> Ta-da. Um, no, Robert Graves. And remember I said last week about the symbolism of pigs and how it can do lust or fertility or anything like that, but it also does death and evil. Yes. And Robert Graves once said the beast, or the uh, boar is the beast of death. Huh. And turns out the, the quote that I, you know, whatever, talked about last week, the chant she made this week was from the same book. Now, Robert Graves, what time period is he from? 1948. Okay, good. All right. Um, Phew. Phew. Because if he had been 1958, oh. I would have felt like a dummy ding dong. No, but it's crazy. I didn't even know. So it actually does correlate. It is the evil and death from that. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, so there, it looks like they're, to me it looked like anyway, that they're nailing the sky on, a, I thought it was a cross at first, but mm-hmm. I wasn't sure. Um Kathy refers to him as a deserter, a cloven beast, and they pan to his hands, and it looks like his hands are removed. But are they, um, what are the cloven, clo, yeah, cloven. <laughs> I'm like doing this weird movement with my hands. That thing that they have, is that, or was it, or were his hands removed? Could you tell? No, I could not. I did know that Lady Gaga was actually next to her. That's her. Oh, Lady Gaga with the whispering into her ear? Yeah. With the makeup? hmm Oh, very cool. Uh, okay, so anyway, Shelby is watching all this um, and then has a weird stare-off with the deer. Yeah, that was weird. It reminded me of Twilight. <laughs> um, yes. 
But the deer runs away because the deer is smart. And there are drums chanting. And this man, who I thought was being nailed to a cross, he wasn't. He's put on some sort of spit over a fire, mm -hmm. like a pig, which yeah. you referred to um, in the first, the first episode. Um, and he's being basically roasted. And they put a they put that pig head on him, which we saw in the first episode. Yep. Uh, and they're kind of turning him like they're cooking him. And Kathy spies Shelby. Yes, because over you know a man screaming for his life and fire going, she hears a twig break. <laughs> and why the fuck Sarah Paulson Shelby decided to stick around, see what's what? I'd be like, oh, they're distracted. Let's go. Maybe Kathy is like a, a exhibitionist, and she, you know, she gets so she gets hit by the car. She goes into the forest. She knows she's going to perform this whole ritual, so she's going to let Shelby watch it to a certain point. You know, it's like pulling your tits out in front of the window, and then you finally decide to look at the guy, and you're like, oh, "I'm calling the cops." <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, I know exactly what you mean. Uh, so she yells. Caesar! And Caesar. Whatever, whatever weird accent she's using. I think she just wanted Caesar dressing. Caesar! <laughs> on on this pig roast! I only eat pork I only with pork my Caesar. Caesar! A pork Caesar salad! So Shelby's like, ooh! I mean, I really think that's what she meant because Shelby is running and nobody follows after her. Well, it, if you look into the history from 1792, uh, pork Caesar salads were a dish that no, was trending. <laughs> so Shelby runs away um, like an idiot, runs into the middle of the road, and basically gets basically gets hit by the car just like Kathy Bates did. It's like verbatim the same. Did she? I thought she just. I thought she stopped right before and passed out. Oh, I just mean it, it, okay. Or did my ADD take hold and I like looked away from the Melissa? No, no, no. You could be right. It's just like. Uh, the dichotomy of yes, Kathy Bates getting hit by no, the car definitely that, definitely there, absolutely. Like an idiot, Jesus Christ, she's an idiot. She, oh. but who hits her? Classic shelves. It's Lee. Why was Lee on the road? Was she looking for Shelby? Do we know? I don't know. Maybe she's in on it in her Corolla. But anyway, Shelby's like, "You jumpy bitch," and <laughs> brings her. To, she didn't say that. <laughs> but I feel like that's definitely what she was thinking. Like, why would you jump in front of my car, you jumpy bitch? But she brings her to the hospital, and Shelby is spouting all this stuff that she's seen, and she sounds like a psycho, and no one believes her. Especially when she says, I like my teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> well, even before that, she's talking about human sacrifice. They even drug test her. Um, surprisingly, she comes back negative. Yeah. Uh, it, you're right. And Matt brings her this lame-ass teddy bear, and... This is where it gets interesting because he vows to her to find a different place to stay. And all of a sudden, Shelby's got brass balls. That's what that's what he said. You put brass balls? Yeah. She says, no, we can't let those mountain men win. And I was like, um, what the fuck, Shelby? If it's a fight they wanted, it's a fight they were going to get. Right, so part of me thinks she witnessed that whole thing, and so she, I don't know how to describe this, like, she is drawn now to what's going on with the house and in the woods, so whether or not she realizes it, yeah, she's getting she's getting some sort of energy. She's like getting seduced almost by the house. Yes, yeah, seduced is the perfect word for it. Because I was like, are you serious? Is it almost like an, well, I don't remember. Because 24 movie, hours Amityville prior, Horror. she was crying and running away. Like what? Am Amityville Horror. I don't know if he was ever away from the house. I don't know if he was ever away from that energy that drew him in. But is, is it, it maybe something like remnants of that? It, that is a great <clears throat> example because it does remind me of Amityville Horror, now that you bring that up. It's very it's kind reminiscent of like slowly of take that. over. Yes. But I thought that whole, it's if it's a fight they want, it's a fight they're going to get. Like, super cheesy. Oh, my God, yeah. And really, like, two hours later from running away from the house, like, you're done, you're leaving. Homegirl changed her tune. And Matt, Matt's okay with that. I, I didn't get it, honestly. When I first saw it, like, I was like, wait, what? Personally, I'm disgusted. But I guess she, like, ran out of the house. Like, she really did. She ran away and everything. 
And then even by running away, things got worse. So she's almost like, no, bring me. I don't know. I think that's a, maybe she you, get hit viewing by a car. that, maybe having, making eyes at the deer, seeing the ritual, it all affected her in some way. That's Tramp, what I'm thinking. thinking like it's almost. gotten, yes, yeah. it's gotten. Um, but anyway, so we get to our first commercial break. And we're going to go ahead and pause here. Uh, oh, my gosh, Kristen, we did not cheers. Oh, We've got yes. a cheers here. Cheers to another wonderful episode. Clink to our drink. And we're going to go ahead and take a break and uh, refill our drinks. Yep, sounds good. Hi, this is your boob tube, Betty Kristen. Uh, when I decided to move out to BFE, I didn't realize how quickly I'd tire of the same radio stations. So I started reading books while I drove to work. And after running over my fifth possum, I realized that probably wasn't the best idea. Audible.com opened my eyes and my ears to a whole other world. Now while I'm stuck in traffic, I get to listen to my favorite stories and keep the possum population live and kicking. If you haven't already, go ahead and try Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a free 30-day trial at www.audibletrial.com slash boobtubebuddies. Over 180,000 titles to choose from through your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Audible.com, helping people become better drivers since 2008. And we're back! Okay, so right after the first commercial break, we see Lee, and she is being interviewed. Wow, that was, I don't know if anybody heard that. It's like a <laughs> speed demon car down the road. Like, Pretty much. Revving its engine. Um, anyway, Lee is, be, is being interviewed, and she's talking about her daughter, Flora. She's given a little bit of background information, and you can just hear the guilt and sadness she has about, just about how shitty she was while she was drunk and all that. Um. But <laughs> dad drops Flora off at this fucking house. And I I literally, I'm like, what the fuck? Why would Lee, Lee never gets to see her daughter, but she talks to Mason, the dad, and is like, oh yeah, bring her, bring her by. And like, what's so funny, she's like, I don't want to bring her to the house. And like, I'm thinking, oh yeah, what could go wrong? Yeah, no, yeah, it's no, cool. no, no, it's cool, it's cool. And, and this is what she says, it'll be all right, I'm going to keep her inside because all the problems are outside. Oh. Well, see, here's my my thought. Stop figuring things will be okay. Like, I'll watch her and things will be okay. Think the opposite, and then you'll be pleasantly surprised. But don't bring your daughter where you have so much background on yourself. Yeah, to um, this but, really great B&B. <laughs> <laughs> the daughter's super cute. They're playing jacks, which is weird, because who plays jacks? in 2016 nothing creepier than a kid playing jacks in an old house i'm sorry oh and i liked oh, this God, line my voice oh you're good it's very <laughs> sultry and sexy yeah the uh, phoebean friends <laughs> lee says flora can make any place home which i thought was a little bum 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 yeah Ooh, i like that yeah really? i thought it was like a sign yeah Ooh, because like as you it. get further in the episode flora is flora special she is Anyway, uh, Lee goes to get food, uh, which is like a gross sandwich in a juice box, but whatever. So she goes to bring it back, and Flora is gone. Flora is not playing jacks anymore. I said, correction, nothing creepier than her going missing and then talking to darkness in the basement. <laughs> yeah, so they, uh, they find her in that tiny room where I think um, Sixth Sense Boy, Haley Joel Osment, was chilling. Is it the same? I couldn't find it. I searched. I searched to see if it was the well, same. Well, I have house. this later, very later in the episode, but okay. I like when I saw um, the little green door at the end of the episode. It's not green. Is it? No. It's not green. It's black. Oh. Well, guess I'm colorblind. Why did you think it was green? I don't see color, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it was black. <laughs> Because I'm thinking like a beautiful forest green all along. Even the walls. Wait, what about the walls? The, the, the wallpaper is green, right? <laughs> is it, it not? I, Do I need to adjust my TV? It was like white wallpaper. Oh, jeez. And the man. door is like dark brown. I, like, I feel like I'm in this house right now. But uh, 
she finds her upstairs in this tiny room behind the tiny door, and it, it appears as if she's talking to herself. Uh, no, she's talking to Priscilla, who is not a real person. She isn't there. Um, and Priscilla is going to make Flora a pretty little bonnet, like the one that she has. Yeah. Uh, and Priscilla wants her to make it stop because... Priscilla's tired of all the blood. And then Lee, Lee chalks it up to, this is what kids do, product of divorce. Isn't that what classic horror genres do? They chalk it up to, meh. Well, it's yeah, fine. I mean, basically, if your parents get divorced, you're fucked. You're yeah. going to turn into a piece of shit. Wow. Uh, no pressure. <laughs> Don't worry, kids. Me and your father are going to stay together forever. <laughs> so Priscilla's tired of all the blood. Flora's a freak. Um, so they, they, she takes her downstairs, basically, but they hear some sort of crash, like a window breaking. And they go into the room. Is it the kitchen? I, I think it's the kitchen. Whatever it is, whatever room. But there's a, no. a bowl or a, a flower smashed on the ground. And wouldn't you know, there's a... Dirty, nasty bonnet on the ground Can just I, like, for floor. I just thought of something. Is it is it symbolic, the fact that it was flowers that are breaking? Isn't flora some kind of name for flowers? Yeah, flora and fauna. Yeah, uh-huh. Hmm. It is. Sorry, these that were, just came to me. Yeah, no, it, I'm sure it could be symbolic of something. These were white daisies, were they not? Yep. Gerber. Gerber daisies. No. no I don't know daisies. if they were Gerber. I think they were regular daisies. Gerber baby daisies. That's, that's what's important. Um, and then we, we get Shelby's take on all of this. And Shelby thinks it's fucking crazy that Lee would bring Flora to the house. And I was screaming at the TV, thank you, Shelby. Yes. For having a little sense in your head. Mm Mm-hmm. Jesus, who would bring your child there? My God. Oh, my God. Exactly. Uh, But it's okay. Lee's going to take care of her as long as she keeps her inside. Mm Mm-hmm. It's going to... Anyway. Uh, I think the next scene is Matt and Shelby are in bed. And they're talking about what they're going to do. And, and they are, they're going to fight this force until they can sail. Sail. Until they can sail <laughs> until away. Until they can sail. <laughs> until they can sell the house. Because they can't lose their savings. They just spent 40000 When maybe they could have spent 33000 As you proposed. <laughs> just episode. saying. Um, just saying. And then you, then you hear some scary pig sounds. or as, Wor- Worldly pig sounds, as I, as I put it. <laughs> or as I like to call it, Kristen having sex. Oh, my God. Kristen when she bones. Oh, my God. Scary or not, uh, to them it I mean, was it scary. is symbolic for lust as well. So it's coming from outside, so who knows? <laughs> Kristen and her husband are boning in North Roanoke, North Carolina, and everyone <laughs> thinks they're being haunted. Oh, no. <laughs> and then classic Shelbs goes to check it out. <laughs> I don't, like, who has Shelbs turn into all of a sudden? I have no idea. She's, She's turned into some balls, superhero. Sure. Yeah, like, she didn't used to be this way. Well, if it's a fight they wanted, it's a fight they'll get. Turn it turn it down a notch, Shelby. Like, what's going on here? You were scared of teeth falling from the ground, and now you're just, like, chasing sex sounds <laughs> in the woods. <laughs> I, I didn't understand why all of a sudden she's so brave. I really, <sighs> like, that really bothered me. Yeah. And anyway, they run into the, her, her and Matt run into the woods with their flashlights. <laughs> and then, I hate this, instantly they get separated somehow and mm-hmm. they're yelling for one another. I put they lose each other, question mark, a million times. <laughs> like, how? <laughs> how do they lose each Show <gasps> me! Matt! And I love how they even put like a, like a quote or something that was like, I mean, you wouldn't understand. Like, you can just get lost in an instant. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. Hold hands. <laughs> You're married. It's okay you touch Did you it. not Hold learn hands. that in camp? You don't you don't go to the bathroom without a buddy. Exactly. Yeah, he's got <laughs> you've you gotta have a buddy. I mean <laughs> what I was thinking is maybe what has happened maybe what's happening right there is what happened to Shelby roadside where yeah. she couldn't find the road. But still, I mean they spent a lot of time going, Shelby, yeah. Matt, Shelby, Matt, Matt you can't find Will. Yeah, so they get lost because they they suck. Mm-hmm. Um, but then Shelby's like looking around the woods. She hears something. Uh, and then she 
She's chasing someone. Am I missing something? Did I miss something? A boar passes them, and then they lose each other. Oh, okay. And then they, then Shell becomes up, and Matt follows behind her onto, but, like, an area. What? Oh, but, okay, so, Shelby, Shelby, <laughs> uh, Shelby is, like, I feel like she she goes off. She's chasing someone. And then you see Matt, and that pig runs by. And this is what I thought. Is that pig, boar? Is that a person in disguise? Is that like a warning? You know, telling. I think that was a straight up boar. I well, of course it was a boar. Yeah, I'm just saying. (laughs) Sorry. You know, there's like a lot of mystical things going on. Oh yeah, you mean like a? um, I'm not saying there's like two. Can never find the word. Two people in a pig costume walking (laughs) by and like, sorry, dude, looking for the Halloween party. Like that's not (laughs) what I mean. I mean, like, uh, you know, like, True Blood with that white... Yes, no, I get what you mean. Like, it's, um, I'm not going to remember the word, but... Yeah. Right. When it's actually an animal, it's a spirit animal, but there's a word for that. Yes. And, like, maybe that guy on the... Maybe that guy on the spit, who knows, maybe he now is He is is now that pig. That Was it a boar? Because it didn't have horns. It just looked like a hog. I don't know my I know varieties. my difference. <laughs> I don't know my varieties. Of I know a pig from a whore. I smell I'm not a whore. I smell bacon <laughs> and a housekeeping for next week. I know a pig from a whore. <laughs> I I know that too. But well, what that's I something meant, to be proud of. What I meant was a, a pig, boar, hog. I'm I'm Man. A, I'm a boar centaur. <laughs> Anyway, that's what I thought. It was yeah. like maybe it was like a warning. But anyway, the uh, where was I? The the I keep wanting to say whore, <laughs> but the pig runs by warning. Oh, I put Mac. God, I can't cut this guy's name right. <laughs> and he I, is that important. I was I put also they're terrible finders. <laughs> like they're the worst. They're like oh. my kids. <laughs> like <laughs> it's on the table and they're looking at the ceiling <laughs> but anyway they they both end up at the fire that is burning up through the woods somehow they didn't see it beforehand mm-hmm. like this huge fire nope at, um, somehow they never see the fire i know but they, they just come upon it I, it's, it's magic it is is it a straw doll it's a straw doll is it no or is it the spit that Shelby saw from earlier, but it's a different part of the woods. I wasn't sure what I thought was it was going just like, on. I think like it was closer to their house, and it was like just a tall stake made into like you know a stick figure, almost straw doll, but with. Um, so you don't think it was the same thing that Shel- Shelby walked upon before? It might have been, but erected. Because to me, it looked because like, he was almost on a spig pit horizontally. Right, this was vertical, so maybe it, it was true. just that. But you do see something like to say erected. Ca- kind of erected. You do see something kind of horizontal with it. I thought. I thought you see like meat hanging. Off oh, you of definitely it. see meat hanging, and I thought it was human skin. I just thought it was a part of that guy that they put over yeah. the spit with the pig head. Yeah, and like somehow it ended up human skin. here. Well, I I don't know human skin. I just thought it was body parts. Well, see, I actually thought it might be uh, like an I not an idea but a theory that could possibly um be created that it's a cannibal thing like possible cannibal thing because they've never done that with american horror story yet have they i mean maybe like minutely but like i don't think they've ever done cannibalism Mm -hmm. and actually um croatonin in the lost colony the word that was left that was the only thing left when um which is part of the roanoke theory that you had mentioned before yeah so when he returned Nothing was there except for Croatonin. Well, Croatonin was actually an island. And um, I was thinking maybe the people from that island, maybe there was no evidence of bodies because they were cannibalists. And then that, yeah, you know, it's easy to go off on tangents and theories. Well, and this, but I was give thinking maybe it's a cannibal thing, and I thought it was human skin, honestly, hanging off. I thought maybe it was that guy that they put on the spit, his human skin. Well, yes, and that's what I thought it was. De- what I thought would it was definitely part of his body, whatever it was. Yeah. And and you're exactly right. They give you 
fuel for the fire to take it in a million different directions. Absolutely. But at least what they're doing so far is they're, you know, they're throwing throwing you a couple bones and you can take it that way instead of throwing you Everything. They know what the public wants. <laughs> you know, and then we're left to our own devices to yeah. create whatever we want to create, which I like better. I like mm-hmm. it way, way, way better. Mm-hmm. Anyway, huh, um, Matt, like a caveman, knocks it down. Mm-hmm. Um, he refers to it as demonic. Yes. And they call the police. And the, there's no way the police can deny this because it's there. It's There's no way. It's yeah. there. It's not in their heads. Um <laughs> <laughs> this is this cracked me up. Okay, so the police officer says he's going to check it out with Ishmael, Ishmael, uh, Ishmael Polk. Polk and his sons. Ishmael, really? Ishmael. <laughs> it's not Jim or Bud <laughs> or. Well, maybe that's a maybe Tim. that's a hint in itself. Well, that's racist. Why, Ishmael? That's not okay. Why? I don't know what it. What? Ishmael is not like a like. What's Ishmael's heritage? Once again, I am just stepping into a black <laughs> hole. Well, what is it? It's not like a southern man's name. But I'm asking you, do you know what it is? Because I don't. What it, it, is what an, it comes from? It is an ethnic name. What ethnicity? I don't want to say eth- because eth- I am terrible. Oh, <laughs> I'm I'm sitting over here like I wouldn't feel bad, Bethany. Because I'm over here mispronouncing words left and right. Could you stop asking me about it? I'm really super offended. Moving on. Okay, so Shelly gets know, even it's bigger just super balls. super ethnic, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but they're gonna follow up, and they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna have a cop on their property twenty four seven. Because everyone knows one one squad car in a horror story. Do you think it's like a terrorist throw thing? <laughs> Yeah, you're like a masochist. Oh. Nope. See, I'm okay. I'm over here misusing words and mispronouncing words. No, you're right. Like I want to shoot myself in the foot and make anybody. Oh, so I am right. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's super not okay that they used Ishmael. <laughs> okay, so everyone. I'm sorry, but one <laughs> squad car? I think that's okay. I'm surprised they even gave them one squad car. No, mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm surprised that the police did that. But in yeah. the show, I think the reason I'm saying that is because Matt afterwards was like, "Well, now Shelby we feel, was fierce. Well, now we now we feel good. Now we can sleep through the night." Quite honestly, I would feel good. Really? Yeah, I think I would. I would I have this false sense like, of security I if there was like a police the, officer outside my door. No, I feel like he's Kenny, the video guy from Scream, like. I don't care if somebody's sitting out there. Like, what's the guy from Super Troopers that stares at the uh, billboard and like jacks off and tries to like measure how fast he's jacking off? <laughs> like the the billboard of the lady smoking the cigarette. It's, you know what I'm talking just, about, right? Yes, exactly. And like, I know it every day. It's just being on the spot. I would still um, feel what's safer. His name? I, Ramrod. Um, I don't know, but I would feel safer with him in my yard than nobody in my yard. I would him? be okay. Really. Yeah. Even, this is really bothering me that I don't know it. I and might not be able to like it. on the radio the that's the terrible episode. that everyone hates with the moustache. The I'd moustache. be okay with him in my yard. Actually, I'd be. Anyway, we don't need to talk about super troopers. But, um, so anyway, they Farva? Feel... Farva. Yes, I would be cool with Farva. That's what it is. Oh my God, release. <sighs> I can move release. on now. I can move on now. Jesus. If they gave me Farva, I'd feel pretty good because I feel like he'd be on the ball. Okay, so anyway, it cut to them sleeping in bed, and you hear the phone ringing, mm-hmm. and Matt gets up. Matt, right? Not Will, not Mac. Okay, Matt gets up, and he answers it, and you hear, like, static. It reminded me of Stranger Things a little bit. Oh, yeah. So you hear static, and then this lady is like, please, they're hurting me. And I thought and the cord was cut. And the, and the phone was unplugged. When I first heard the voice, I have to tell you, I it thought it was like Shelby. Yes! yes it's I a, thought it was yes. Shelby's voice. That's, that's what exactly I wrote down. That's what like, I thought. Oh my God, it's like a premonition. This is. Yes, that's exactly what I thought. It sounded it sounded like her. Sounded it did. Like and maybe 
maybe it will end up being that's so funny i'm so glad you said that because anyway the the i absolutely thought that uh, oh that's so mm, that's mm -hmm. juicy but it cuts to uh, like old ugly lady in bed so i just assumed oh it's old it's old lady in bed yeah who called yes. on the phone um, and she looks so pathetic. And then you see those two nurses again from the hallway from last episode. And they look so sinister. Yeah, so it's obviously not a connection with the nurses from Murder House because they were actually murdered from the Richard Speck mirrored. Okay, so theory. different type. I, yeah. Okay. They look so, so awful. And um, they're forcing poor Margaret. Well, you find out her name is. But they're forcing poor, poor Margaret to take medication. She doesn't want to. And you'll take it and you'll like it. And so she doesn't take it. And then they... Forget. Was that back talk? <laughs> and they're just like smiling the whole time. And then they fucking shoot her in the head. And it was so You've violent. You've been warned. And then shoot her in the fucking head. I jumped. I was not expecting Absolutely. that. Oh my god. It was so violent. You're not human if you didn't. And they're laughing. And then they spray paint. M, and they're giggling as they say, M is for Margaret. Exactly. And it it's... felt like Murder House, though. Like, we were just hearing another story from Murder House it, at that point. I agree. It did feel that way. And they're they're laughing maniacally. And Matt is in the hallway watching all of this happen. Yes. Um, and then he runs away like a little pussy baby that mm -hmm. he is. Yep. And then commercial break. So what, do you, what are you thinking so far of this episode well, compared to the first episode? Okay, so because of how it started out, which was really a great continuation of how it had been going so far, and then all of a sudden Matt walked into that room, and you saw those nurses again, but it was almost like you were in a different world in a dream or something. I was very hesitant. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly felt like, oh, this feels like murder house. Like, um, I didn't know what to think. But, of course, that was definitely evened out throughout the rest of the episode. But yeah. that's how I felt at that point. Yeah. No, I agree. I mean, I, I still liked it, but I wasn't as yeah, absolutely. jazzed. absolutely. I wasn't as jazzed as I was the first episode. Yeah. But, again, that's the first episode. So yeah, I don't you can't be jazzed at every it. second. <laughs> right. Uh, so you come back from commercial and Lee, she says it's 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. yep. And I don't know if that means something. We don't know yet. That could mean something since um, during a lot of these scenes, they seem to wake up in the middle of the night. So maybe 3 a.m. means something. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Lee wakes up um, and she hears Matt screaming at the cops or cop that's yeah. on duty about what he's just seen because he's so freaked out. Um, so he, the cop, I don't know if Shelby's there, I don't remember, but they go back to that room where yeah, she's there. supposedly all, of, all this went down with the poor lady getting shot and it's... It's it's all back to normal. There's nothing there. Yeah. It's just a, as it was. There's no... There's nothing. And he just looks crazy. Right. And Matt says, maybe, you know, maybe I was dreaming. And he sort of hopes that's what the case is. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and then this made me roll my eyes. Matt says, you know, maybe it's neurological damage from my accident. Mm -hmm. What a bit Like, pussy baby. Mm -hmm. You got punched in the head. Come on, man. Like I said, you hit somebody the right way. Whatever. He's a pussy. I still stand by that. And I, I love Lee's response to all of this that has happened. Where she basically says that they look like they are crying wolf. They look psycho. Coppas ain't gonna come running. Right. They keep talking like that. Right. They look ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Oh, kooks. She calls them kooks. I love that word. Mm-hmm. So the next scene, we've got Mason, which is Flora's dad. Oh, yeah. Flora's still at the house. <laughs> While all of this is happening. <laughs> Flora's cool, though, because she makes any place her home. Yes. So he's picking up Flora. Um, then they come in the house, and they can't find her right away. But Lee describes this game that Flora plays. I don't like her version of hide and skate. See it. Hide and skate. Hide and skate. <laughs> it's this version of hide and skate that she doesn't tell her parents where she puts on her roller skates. Yep. And she... I don't like it. I don't either. It's super dangerous. She escapes through the house and she finds a room to hide in 
and nobody knows which is the little green greenish blackish door the right and that's where the moment i was like you know what i think bethany's right this is the sixth sense interior but i actually looked it up just like you did it's not could not find a thing i couldn't find either Uh, the slurpy turd green because that's what your poops look like after you have a slurpy it's like that green brown color it's awful anyway (laughs) her her version of hide and skate (laughs) that nobody knows she's playing which to me sounds obnoxious if my daughter did that but lee's like i was so cute i think it was nostalgic no that's not okay like don't go missing without me like, no, not okay. Oh, I would be yelling my daughter's Teaching name. bad lessons. Oh, you're so cute. Go and hide when we don't know it. Ugh. No, not okay. Not in this creepy house. But, Mm-mm. so, and I like that Lee thought her husband may think, like, oh, this is just like the olden days when she would skate away and nope. hide in the turd brown door. And Nope. No, he doesn't think that. But they find her. And she, it appears that she's talking to herself. Yes behind it what is it like she's looking at a closet or behind a door or something along yeah, those lines but she tells her and there's nothing it's that just she's blackness. not playing hide and seek that she's just talking to priscilla right and they come in and she's like priscilla's gone and she almost looks irritated and flora lets them know that she was offering her i guess her favorite doll her special doll mandy um as a trade because they're gonna kill us all and save me for last. Can you imagine your kid telling you that? Can you? Yes. My daughter is <laughs> really morbid. <laughs> That's just every day I'll with my you. kid. I'll see you all when I'm dead and in heaven. <laughs> oh, God. I, uh, uh, that That's another podcast. Uh, that's another podcast. Stay tuned. Um, if my daughter said they're going to kill us all and save me for last... I would just send her outside with a popsicle and tell her to cool off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. But like a normal parent, Mason, who's Flora's dad, is so upset. And he takes Flora. He's fucking Like pissed. a normal human being, he rushes out. Right. And he says, okay, let's leave. Right. He, he says he's going to call the judge. He is going to make sure that Lee doesn't get to see her daughter anymore, basically, is the gist. And Lee is so sad, and Flora is so sad. It's really, really sad. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you cut... Super sad. It, it really is. No, it actually really is. So then you cut to the next scene, which I relate to this. Lee falls off the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> and that's literally what she says. She's like, that's the night I fell off the wagon. That's not how she sounds. And I'm like, Matt. <laughs> she, and she's on the floor, and there's some, like, sort of broken dish, and she's wasted. She's like, sorry, Shelby. Um, I've often found myself saying, I broke your bowl. I didn't mean to. <laughs> and Shelby's like, really, Lee? Really? Um, but then you see that there are six bloody knives in the ceiling. Were they six? Six. I, I counted count. them because I have a theory. What is it? I will tell you later. Okay, sounds good. So six bloody knives in the ceiling, and Lee's like, what? and then I put Bethany to bed because oh. you put me to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Lee's like, well, I gotta didn't get your shit together. I didn't do that. <laughs> um, yeah. So they put her to bed, and Matt refers to her as the strong one. Just let me put you to bed. Matt's taking care of it. It's really sweet. But as Matt leaves, what do you see? Um, the nurse is coming the fuck out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. It's it like made creeps. me jump. I'm not me gonna too. lie, like it, it was because it, it was such a quick flash. You really thought you were just going to the next scene. It was like right there, and you really had to be paying attention. And they're just like over her bed, staring at her with their sinister grins. It was terrifying. Yeah. And Lee doesn't notice it because Lee is uh, Vegas wasted, and <laughs> um, her eyes are closed. So she, Lee is not aware that they're there. Um, Shelby calls for Matt in the kitchen. And uh, to verify that they see. I yeah, because go go Shelby. Well, at first I thought it was like Kathy Bates' character. Me too. See, I yeah. thought it was an old lady. But I'm pretty sure it was Priscilla or was, the little girl just trying to get somebody out to the area. Yeah, it um, was a little girl. But yeah, Shelby says, Matt, do you see what I see? Or something along that line. 
Um, yes. And he agrees. And then, you know. Let's go, get that bitch. Let's go check it out. You know, because apparently Shelby's all about it now. And yeah. And Shelby... they want to go to check it out. And then they find a door kind of hidden under mulch and leaves. Yeah. And Shelby says something about being drawn to a cellar. Yeah. Um, oh, really? Yeah. She was drawn to it. And when you find it. I didn't miss that. I've... Okay. Well, I mean, when you're drawn to a cellar, what do you do except climb down it? Of course. It looks super safe. Perfectly normal. Uh, the Meanwhile, those crazy nurses are over Lee's body. And she wakes up and... Yeah, she... Because she, she like, sends jumps. something watching her. Exactly. Uh, she wakes and the, the nurses are gone. Um, and this... Lee goes downstairs, and what do you see? A wall of, like, bloody dicks, just like... Dicks. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Blood tails? Pigtails. Uh, piggly wigglies pinned to the wall, wiggling around. Yes. Little pigtails. Very creepy. I did not like it. Not the kind of pigtails I gave my daughter today for picture day, either. She's lying. I <laughs> <laughs> just pinned, like, real... Pig tails to her head. She's, like, she's getting really into this show. Oh, she's like, Mom, I don't think this is so cute. <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> but you'll yeah, wear so. it and you'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> so scary Piggly Wigglies. Uh, but then she turns back and she makes it sound so cute. Yeah, it does. Yeah, we Piggly Wigglies. I mean, pigtails are super cute. They are, even when they're bloody and pinned to a wall. Yeah, I mean, uh, it sounds happens. like something you do when you have sex. Uh, but she she looks back and and they're gone, but then she gets drawn to, um, I put no a mirror not a window a mirror, and she's like getting closer and her hand is going out towards the mirror. When her hand was going out towards the mirror, did it not look like um like a crane or a flamingo going like with this long <laughs> I didn't arm notice, and like but bird to mouth find again? <laughs> oh yeah, the like kind of bird mouthish. Yes. yes. I'm like, what is this? It's like a but sand hill crane. I saw the same thing. The... What if uh, Brad and Ryan are like, the real secret is it's about sand hill cranes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what um, Miranda W. really guessed. <laughs> sand hill cranes. Anyway. Oh, yeah, that was great. <laughs> so it's not sand hill cranes. Or, yeah. or maybe it is. But it's her hand. And then this, I jumped so high. The scary lady oh, face. Big man? Wait, no. Scary Wait. lady face comes out of the, the... Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. That's later. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. The pig man comes out. But that's why you, you feel like it's the same thing, because it does kind of happen the same thing later. The, the um, Yes, so the ignore that. That happens Oof. later. I was just, just so Spoiler excited. Spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, I stink. No, this time it was pig man and mirror turtle mouth. Which is equally as scary. Yeah. And then it cuts to commercial. So after commercial break, we've got Shelby and Will going into the shelter. They talk about how it looks like someone has lived down there. Um, and they find a camera. They found a video. They take it back to the house. But a bada bam turtle mouth. And yep. then we get a shit ton of information, like, yep. thrown at you. He says, I, I am not what I am, forces... Um, that will not let me sleep. He's too afraid to go back in the house. He he states that he's an intelligent man. Um, he's a professor at Bradley University, and we find out his name is Doctor Elias or Elias Cunningham. Um, and he shows you that they, the the house has been doing awful things to him, and they, they've been getting physical. Oh, um, I've been saying sleep. Elias. Elias, is yeah, it? for sure. No, I think it's Elias. And he says, you know, I'm not crazy. He's not going back into the house. Um, and then he talks about. Facts. Facts. And before that, Shelby and Matt say we were pulled into the video looking into his eyes. Good point. He says today is October 11th, 1997. Which I looked it up, couldn't find anything. Okay, he said that was going to be his last uh, record, possibly. And he's going to tell you the truth as much as he know knows. He says he was doing research for the book Helter Skelter, which is super interesting because yes. that goes back... To any Manson theories that came from any teasers, it's just a good tie-in, even if yes, a little bit. Yes, it is. It really is. Um, so he was he had, he was doing research on those two nurses we saw, and he gives their background. They Miranda were, and Bridget Jane. Oh, I didn't get their, their names. names. 
Mm-hmm. So they were sisters at an assisted living facility, uh, ALF is what I'm going to call it, um, and they ended up getting accused of killing oh, is two that people. A, is that? Yeah, that's a term. Term? Yeah, it's a term, ALF. Pretty cool. Um, and you see that they obviously did it. They show footage, like they're smiling as they kill people. So they definitely did it, but yeah. they got away with it and they moved to a house and he talks about how they were drawn there. They were drawn at that house in North Carolina, the same house. Um, and they tell you about the first owner, uh, briefly, it was two dad, not two dads, one dad. <laughs> a very modern family back in time. <laughs> one dad, one mom, two daughters. Yes. Now, is that anything? Is mm-hmm. that from any of the, like, Amityville? But do you remember? Is okay, that Amityville? So, they have two on. daughters? So, I wanted to say, I, oh, I don't know. That, good point. I don't know. I'll look it up. Um, so the interesting part was, you know how they vacated the house and they left all their belongings and there was no trace of them? Yeah, so there's Again, no like trace the of Rona their belongings lost except, colony. except the dead bodies. Possibly, can, possibly cannibalism. Oh, okay. Because that's how you get rid of every trace of them. But before that, they opened their own ALF. That's the, the only way These two nurses, and they've got weird criteria. <laughs> uh, it's based on people's first names. Because they want to spell out their favorite word, murder. It's not murder. <laughs> it's well. So R for Roger. Poor Una, Roger, Margaret, Eunice, all killed, and the letter of their name was spray painted in red. Who's D? Do we see D? We never see D. I don't think so, actually. But anyway, they was got, that not that scene where she was like suffocating him? Like, yes. Not terrifying. So they show how they killed these people that to spell crazy. out the word. Murder. Yeah. Um, so October 29th, 1989. Is that what I have? October 29th, 1989. But remember he said it started as a sick game, but then a rebellion. Like almost something made of take over each soul. They would take, like would add a lifetime to their passion. Ooh. When it doesn't matter how many times after they, the, the nurses were gone. Yes. And it doesn't matter how many times they tried to clean off the letters M U R D E, they would keep reappearing. Yeah. Can I say one thing though? When the cops were going through, um, they show a quick thing, a uh, quick table, and it's full of teeth, and they're the nurses. Oh, I didn't like see the that. yes, I was watching back on it, and um, when the cops go through, right before they look up to the right to see the um, the half done murder. You look to the left and you see a table, and on the table is like a whole thing full of teeth. Oh, wow. And with the nurses and the teeth and oh. the teaser, where they have the, the actual nurse cutting the teeth thing. Yes. So I was like, oh, hey. Oh, wow. That's so funny. I bet all these teasers are going to play in. Yes. And I, I hope that's actually one thing that, like, is true. Rings true, yeah. Okay. That'd be really cool. Uh, so, but Dr. Cunningham's theory is that they didn't leave, that they were stopped by something even more evil whether it was the house, the woods, but he's got to figure it out. So mm-hmm. his last... He had to check it out. Right. So his last testament, his last whatever, he goes into the house. And it all of a sudden turns into what you talked about last week, total Blair Witch. Yes, definitely Blair Witch. It's dark. That even close-up of his like face. Yes. It's very scary. And he, yes. he says stuff like, show yourself. You see something race by... Okay, and then this is what I was talking about earlier, where he goes to the mirror and a face comes out of the mirror, and it was so scary, yes. I jumped. And that's why I think you thought that, because even, like, right before that, you almost saw a shadow, like, him trying to grab at something. Yeah. And it looked like... Yes, like the crane. The crane, just like with Angela Bassett. So yes. That might be something. Right, Sandhill Crane. Because when, as soon as you said that, I didn't remember Angela Bassett doing that, but as soon as you said it, I thought about this scene. Well, maybe she didn't do it. Maybe I was flash. Maybe I was. Well, let's let's find out. It's Sandhill Crane is what this it's is Sand all Hill about. Cr- American Story. Miranda W., give me your 2027 Mercedes-Benz. <laughs> American Horror Story, Sandhill Crane. <laughs> okay, and you then. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> right before the commercial break, you see a, like a butcher knife. Boom. In the door. Yes. Commercial break. So, we come back, poor Shelby, poor Matt, at the bank, trying to rationalize with them that... In the house with the bank. Right, yes, that they that they got bamboozled. They got a house that was... They, that S-O-L. they lied about. Yes. And basically, the bank guy, who's so scummy, like, nope, you're trapped. As That's it is. Literally, the word trapped was Sorry. used. Yep. Was it? Yeah. Oof. That they lied about the address, and you're trapped. 
And then Lee drives up with who other than her daughter? What the fuck, Lee? But what, what in I the actual fuck, Lee? What I found interesting is when Will, not Will, Jesus, when Matt <laughs> questions her, like, "What are you doing? Why are you doing this?" <laughs> she talks about how she went to the house just to see her and put her in the car, and that they were literally she, like. She felt drawn back to the house. Like, she had to go back like to the house. Like, next thing she knew, she was there. Yes, so I feel like the house is calling not only Lee back, but Flora. Because Flora now has a connection to it. Um, and Matt's like, this is a felony. That we, you know, Mason's going to call an Amber Alert. Um, and Lee acknowledges, like, oh, sh-, you know, like, shit, I've done something wrong. I just, yeah. I got my daughter. And you see Shelby on the phone. Um, my favorite part, though, I'm sorry, yeah, is ahead. when... Um, she said, or Matt said, you didn't like drink. Or you have, you're not under the influence. You did not imbibe, right? Yeah. <laughs> and my favorite quote from Lee is, I would never endanger my daughter by driving with alcohol in my system or something like that. Um, Classic alcoholic thing to say. It's not even that. It's that, oh, you wouldn't do that, but you would bring her to this house. And I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about the first time. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Lee. I'm talking about the first time. Why invite her there all together if you're trying to make amends for what has gone wrong? Yeah, Mama. If you're packing. Mama ain't packing. She <laughs> says she's packing, but Mama ain't packing. I'm I have sorry. been referring the brain, to myself or as... In the whole store. I have been whole referring... Store. <laughs> in the whole <laughs> store. Oh, and, and Hollister. Yes, I and Hollister. Been, I have been referring to myself as Mama. Like, Mama so tired this yeah, whole week. <laughs> Mama-like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, she... You see Shelby come in, and you, I mean, you assume she's on the phone with Mason, and she's kind of calming down the situation. And strangely enough, she is saying everything right. Um, and she's defending Lee, and she's no, don't call the police, blah 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 blah. And I sort of thought it sounded like a fake conversation because it was done like- so fast, and it was so textbook perfect with the things Shelby was saying. And- Almost like. Shelby, like, from the moment she was in the hospital, something changed. And she's like, no, let's keep them here. Yeah, you're right. So maybe something's happening. Like, something Something changed. Something switched. Something Amityville switched in the brain or the shining almost. Right, because she went from scared to death to, you know, we're going to fight this. Calm, cool, collected. Right, handling this situation. Maybe she didn't grow a pair of balls. Maybe she grew, like, a pair of demons within her. Like, yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Like, yes, that's. Uh, but she, she sends Flora to do homework in the other room. Uh, but Flora sees. Pers- I've got my eye on her now, man. Flora? No. Oh, Shelby. Shelby. I know. That, like I, now that we're talking, like, honestly, talking that phone out, call to me seems so false. And I, and I don't even know that she was. I didn't even take a second thought on that but you're right like, but maybe and and honestly it could be that shelby didn't know it was false you know what i mean like i'm not necessarily sure shelby's aware if if do you know what i'm saying i know exactly what you're saying and i it's, just thought of something but i'm gonna save it till the end okay so that's okay. why i went in like la la land or at least it looked like it did it i did <laughs> uh, shelby sends Flora to do homework in the other room but uh flora sees priscilla calling to her kind of laughing and she follows her, I guess, and mm-hmm. then Lee realizes she's got, you know, like she's got to say goodbye to Flora and mm-hmm. and prepare herself. But she's in the living room, right? Because she's fine, right? Clearly, she's going to be there. Guess what? Guess what? I she literally, I literally I have guess what? what caps. Me too. <laughs> guess oh what? My God. Guess she's what? not right. And what do you do? You run in the woods. Everyone. Yeah. No, well, here's my woods. favorite thing: is the door was cracked open, right? And Lee's next oh, comment. the door opens. It's so creepy. Yeah, it, it's open. And so Lee, the, um, re- not the reenactment, but the other Lee was like, we searched everywhere in the house. I'm like, well, why did you search in the house if the door was clearly open? Yeah, the door like. Did you spend like a good amount of time searching in the house while the door was clearly open? Did you look in the turd room? <laughs> I like to call it the murd room. Oh. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> but, I I mean, okay, so the door, like, that was really creepy. But they, they all run outside looking for her, uh, running into the woods, screaming. And P- 
piggy tails on the tree. You mm-hmm. see them pinned to the tree? Yep. Were they wiggling or no? I don't think they were wiggling this time. I think they were just up on the tree. And nobody saw them, right? No. We uh, did as an audience, but I don't think I Right. So yeah. nobody sees the tree. And then you hear Lee just screaming, and Flora's jacket is at the top of a very tall... I thought it was a tree. You're saying it was a... No, it's a tree. Oh, I thought you said it was like an electric pole thing. That's what I thought in the previous for last time. Oh, okay. But, um, because I thought it was like right outside the house, yeah, but I'm wrong. Because it is completely straight up yeah. with, but what is, what kind of tree is that? Oh my God, I don't know. Anyway, a very common tree that we can I'm not in the name with. botany. But her, uh, her yellow hoodie jacket is flapping in the wind at the very, very top of the tree. Yeah. Um, and then Finn. Elf Finn. So... Okay. okay. Oh, four, 54 minutes, by the way. I don't get it. And then we had this next week on. And last week I had like... 54 a, minutes with commercials. A paragraph to say about next week on. This week my notes is, normally I can make some sense out of them, but it seemed like a Mad Men trailer. So stay tuned. Oh, the Mad Men trailers are the worst. They are. And this one was too. I didn't like it at all. I don't. I didn't watch the trailer because I don't want to be spoiled. Well, you wouldn't be, so go ahead and watch it. So okay, so let me. Give All you I know is that it's not my theory of it being a bunch of different stories, unless they do three and three and three. I think it's just what I, I I can't understand. That's why I'm saying is there something related to Roanoke? Is how there was a point where you saw American Horror Story colon Roanoke, but then throughout the entire rest of the thing, it was American or um, horror story. My Roanoke my nightmare. And so what I'm wondering is is there other stuff that's gone on there that they're going to tell different Roanoke stories or I don't, I don't know. know let me give you my lame theories because yours are always way better um oh god pressure okay Jeez. so I don't like it. here was my first thought uh Lee on the ground you see the six knives in the ceiling and I thought six knives for six people okay so Shelby Matt Lee Flora Mason baby because she had that miscarriage so maybe that baby was like good and now she's gonna have evil baby okay and then that mirroring season one right so and then you saw that one knife in the door that was and it's thrown. the same baby and ultimate it's the antichrist right you saw that one door or door that one knife thrown in the door and i yeah. thought okay mm. so maybe that's the the baby to come okay and then you've got Five people for m u r d e i was wondering that but we don't have anybody with r yet right Right, you don't have anybody for R, but let's just say our characters represent the other letters. So, again, you've got, um, God damn it, Shelby, Matt, Lee, Flora, Mason, and then you've got R, maybe symbolically for baby, baby. Rosie. Maybe. Who knows? Because of the teaser that was a baby, and then the weapons were in the shape of the word pig. Yes. And pig is... All a part of the season, yes. and it might have to really do something with the baby. So I am committing. Okay. I'm on board. I'm, I'm, I'm committing totally there. To, I I will say definitely there's going to be a baby. I'm I'm committing to it fully. No, I definitely agree with you. I will get on board. There's with that going to be a baby. There was a lot of. I think yes, I agree. I mean, we saw them have sex, so they're procreating. Yeah. Um, and then I would like to throw out my wine observations because clearly they mean nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i love that uh, great, you know that's a great um what can you do you're right and you're wrong um well you don't know yet maybe they'll surprise you again and the bring baby's it back born with a glass of white <laughs> in <laughs> that's it that's it and they name it sutter home oh sutter it's gonna be so cute um okay so my theory is that Shelby is actually a witch or um, a descendant of. And this is what ultimately ties her to season three. And the reason, um, I mean, it's actually a growing theory, so I don't want to, like, take credit for it, but I I reckon I saw it too. Um, when she, like, touches him. Okay, sorry, let's go back. When, he gets when she attacked, touches whom? I'm sorry. <laughs> Will or Matt or Mac? Um, Wet. Mill. <laughs> I don't know. In the first episode, he gets attacked by a gang, and maybe he died or was brain dead in the hospital. 
Oh, when she brought him back. Remember she touched him in that connection? Yes, she talked and, about that. Con- okay, yes. so here's why I put it to season three. Um, I would have murdered this word if it weren't for uh, my wonderful g- friend Greg. Um, Vitalum Vitalis, that's the spell they do in season three to bring somebody back to life. And that means the balancing of scales between one life force and another. So as soon as she touches him and he wakes up, Blood runs down her leg, and she loses the baby. Oh, wow. That's heavy. So, I don't know. My mouth is ajar, and I'm just staring at you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Staring contest. That's um, awesome. But, yeah, that's that's my one, like, the one theory I do want to marry myself to is that she has some ties to season three from that and speaking of season three okay so let's just make a bet here okay let's just make a friendly wager yes let's do it that is what you are banking on that she ends up having some sort of what which whatever we'll give it whatever whatever kind of power she may have we'll give it to you okay my belief is that there's going to be some sort of baby involved that she that she has she has to be impregnated there's gonna be a baby yes so I'm totally pushing for that though because I think you're so right on that. Well, I already called it. That's fine. <laughs> I'm afraid to lose this bet because I completely agree with her. But yes, let's do this. Well, how well, about your bet is that they're all ghosts? I don't. I'm not ready for that. No, you're not that committed. No, I am. I. I not that no. committed. All right. I take back my chip. All right. Baby, which which baby? Okay, which baby? Which baby? Which baby? Where's your baby? So don't, we don't necessarily—I don't necessarily know what we want to bet on yet. That'll take some time. I don't but know. I'm gonna come see. up with something. Really I might good. make you come up with something completely different. Okay. No, you I'm have just you have one week. One week. Okay. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Or you can agree with me, and we can just call it a draw. Nope. I like the bet. And then Let's I win, and I get to make you do something anyway. All right. I've already lost, folks. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, that's, are that's we, all the theories I got for now. Got it? All right. Well, I am excited to see what unfolds next week. Me too. We I, should, our voices should be less deep. Because- yeah. I, I really apologize <laughs> for the, um, hoarseness of my voice. Um, we're too old for Las Vegas. Apparently. Yeah. No, we really are. Oh God. Um, all right. Well, we're signing off. Good night, little buddies. Good night, little buddies.